Hello everybody, and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe to the channel for regular content on ancient architecture, as well as all of the latest news from the world of archaeology. Back in 2020, an astonishing discovery was made. Well, an astonishing rediscovery, as the missing Dixon relic, a wooden rod found inside the Great Pyramid in 1872, turned up at the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. It was one of three objects found inside the Queen's Chamber Northern Channel, a channel that was closed at both ends until 1872, when structural engineer Wayman Dixon and his friend James Grant, a physician and adventurer, smashed through the north wall to reveal a narrow channel. Inside was this copper hook and this stone ball both of which are now kept in the British Museum, and there was also this length of cedar wood. Whether these relics somehow work together, or whether they're just random objects left by workers inside the Northern Channel we don't know. But one thing is for certain, they date to the time of the pyramid's construction. Because at the northern high end of this channel there's a closed door, the channel does not reach the outside edge of the pyramid, and so there is no way into it from the outside. And before 1872, the bottom end was also closed, by not one, but two giant limestone blocks, both of which are load-bearing, and they make up part of the northern wall of the Queen's Chamber. The channel has no signs of damage by ancient tomb robbers, there's no breach that could mean that these objects are intrusive after the pyramid's construction, and no, this broken channel block I showed in a video a few years ago does not lead to another adjoining channel. I've recently been shown another view of this broken block, which sadly I'm not allowed to publish, but I know for sure it is merely a broken piece of limestone, and nothing but masonry is beyond it. Yes, I was disappointed as well. So the relics can only date to the time of the pyramid's construction, estimated to be between 2580 and 2560 BC, because they were trapped in a narrow channel with no way inside. But on its rediscovery in 2020, the piece of wood was radiocarbon dated, and the results really were quite a shock having a date range between 3341 and 3094 BC. Yes, at a minimum, it was around 500 years older than the conventional date of the pyramid. But how can this be? Is the pyramid older than we're led to believe? Does it imply the Great Pyramid was in fact built in the pre-dynastic or early dynastic, or is there another explanation? Well, in this video, I'll be trying to find out the answers. Before I go further, this video is sponsored by Odoo, an all-in-one management software that provides entrepreneurs with a range of applications to simplify the day-to-day -day management of their business, including invoicing, accounting, project management, website creation, and much more. Organisation is so important, and Odoo is a fantastic way to keep on top of your business, whatever its size. You have the main dashboard of the app where you can set up projects. Within each project, you can add stages, tasks, subtasks and milestones, and also the deadlines you need to achieve. Within each task, you can assign people, send emails, log notes, attach files, schedule activities like meetings, create to-do lists, and so on, keeping everything centralised through the chatter. And this helps when multiple people need to work simultaneously on the same project. It can also be shared both internally and externally. And depending on what you need to see, you can also have different views. The Kanban view helps you organise tasks by stages. The Gantt view gives you an overview of your tasks. And the List view lets you perform batch actions. On top of that, the first app is free for life, including unlimited hosting and support. So, 
Click the link in the description to start using your first app for free and see for yourself how easy it is to use and just how helpful it can be. And now back to the video and back to 1872. Whilst investigating the Queen's Chamber, Wayman Dixon and James Grant noticed specific cracks in the south wall of the chamber. Dixon probed a nearby joint with a wire and he found out he could keep pushing it through for quite some distance without meeting any resistance. There must have been a void, and so the two men decided to excavate the wall, and no, not very neatly. But they did reveal the southern channel, and they scrawled the opening date on the wall right next to it and above it. Knowing the king's chamber had two opposing air channels inside, Dixon and Grant made the logical assumption the same was likely for the Queen's Chamber as well, and so they turned their attention to the North Wall. And yes, concealed behind the joint between two wall blocks, was another small channel heading off northwards into the Pyramid's core masonry. The discovery was published in the journal Nature on December 26th, 1872, and it's in this article where we first learn about the so-called Dixon relics. To see some fantastic high-resolution pictures and to learn more about two of the three objects, visit the website of the British Museum on the links I've left in the description below. They describe the stone ball as a spherical dolerite pounder with a diameter ranging from 6.5 to 7.6 centimetres and weighing 540 grams. The hook that was found is made of copper, and is described by the British Museum as a copper-forked implement. The presence of organic material on the object suggests it was originally fitted with a wooden or bone handle. Its height is 4.55 cm, its width is 5.19, and it's 1.09 cm in thickness. But the third item is missing from the collection in the British Museum, and it had been missing for decades. James Grant had kept the wooden rod until his death in 1895. It was inherited by his daughter and she kept it until 1946, when she donated it to the University of Aberdeen in Scotland. The object was never properly catalogued in the university's archive, and although people have been searching for it in the past, the small wooden rod was not found. Well, not until the year 2020, when curatorial assistant Abir Eladani came across it, 74 years after it was donated. Eladani was reviewing items for the university's Asia collection when she found the wooden rod, now in a number of pieces, and inside an old cigar box and this was marked with Egypt's former flag. I have to say it is pretty cool that although the relic has been in Scotland for many decades, it was rediscovered by an Egyptian. It's almost poetic. But anyway, after its rediscovery, the wooden rod was radiocarbon dated, and the results of which surprised everyone, because the date range was outside of Khufu's reign, and outside of Egypt's Old Kingdom. The piece of wood had a date range from 3341 to 3094 BC, and that's at least 500 years older than the reign of King Khufu, the supposed builder of the Great Pyramid. In the past five years, some people have been using this discrepancy as evidence the Great Pyramid was not built for King Khufu, because, well, we now have hard evidence right here. You surely can't argue with the scientific data. It does sound like compelling evidence against the mainstream view for the age of the Great Pyramid, and for me personally, I was forced to delve deeper into the science and find out what specifically was being dated. Radiocarbon dating a piece of wood does not give you the date when the tree was cut down. It also does not tell you when the specific wooden object was made, or even the age it was last used. It gives you the age of the tree ring the wooden object is made from, 
And what do we know about cedar wood that was used in Old Kingdom Egypt? It was imported from Lebanon, a country that's always been famous for its enormous cedar trees. Lebanese cedars can grow up to 40 meters or 130 feet in height, with trunks up to 2.5 meters or 8 foot 2 inches in diameter. Some examples have been found to be even bigger. And they live for hundreds and hundreds of years. Some ancient cedars are thought to be over 1,000 years old, and some sources even say they can live to between 2,000 and 3,000 years. Cedars are slow-growing trees. Cultivation goes all the way back at least 3,200 years, when the Hittite Empire established two populations in northern Turkey. They first came to Britain in 1638 by Edward Pocock, and now, nearly 400 years later, one particular tree is still going strong. And if you're cutting down cedar trees to export the wood, logically you don't use young trees. The trees you'd cut down are old and established. So, to clarify, if you cut down, say, a 700-year-old cedar tree, the oldest central tree ring would give you a radiocarbon date 700 years older than the date it was cut down, because the tree lives for so long. So now, all of a sudden, a piece of wood found inside the Great Pyramid dated to at least 500 years older than the structure doesn't actually seem that out of place, especially if the wood comes from the inside of a very old Lebanese cedar. And we know from studying the famous Palermo stone that in the 4th dynasty of ancient Egypt, great quantities of cedar wood were imported. In the reign of Snefru, the father of King Khufu, 40 shiploads of cedar timbers were imported for his building projects. And maybe Khufu did the same, or maybe there was wood left over from his father's reign, or there were wooden objects that were reused by Khufu. In ancient Egypt, quality wood was scarce, so objects could well have been recycled for as long as the wood remained intact. Whatever the origins of this small piece of wood that was found inside the Great Pyramid, the fact is, it isn't strong enough evidence to date the Great Pyramid all by itself. Because yes, you could argue it came from a young tree, and so yes, the pyramid could predate the reign of Khufu. But on the flip side, you could also argue that it comes from the inside of an old tree, and so the pyramid is perfectly dated to the reign of Khufu. By itself, you can't date or redate the Great Pyramid. It can only be used as supporting evidence in a much larger dataset. But at the very least, it does tell us the Great Pyramid can't be any older than 3341 BC. And that's because of where it was found, in a sealed channel in the core masonry of the pyramid. Whatever the truth, this small cigar box containing splinters of wood is an important rediscovery. It's one of only three artifacts ever discovered inside the Great Pyramid, and these objects were left in situ ever since it was built. And so, however it is interpreted, it's something that pyramid enthusiasts must consider, and the data from radiocarbon dating is something that can't simply be dismissed or forgotten. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.